Hey YouTube, it's Brian from AquaticSupportSystems.com and Brian's Fish Tanks. I've talked in the past about these 210 gallon oceanic tanks behind me. These are old tanks and I've basically said that they're bulletproof. Well, I found out recently that they're not as bulletproof as I thought. I was down here um, one day kind of doing some stuff with some of my shrimp tanks and I looked over at this bottom tank right here and basically noticed that the brace in the middle over here that kind of holds the middle section together a crucial part had come undone and was laying down in the tank also the glass tops and the lights had fallen into the tank luckily none of the lights were damaged even though they got wet and uh, so I decided right away what I needed to do was drain this tank just in case it let go. Um, 210 gallons of water down in this basement wouldn't be a good thing. So I'm gonna just kind of take you through everything I did as far as repairing it. I didn't think to get a camera going while I drained the tank, that's not important. I also didn't get a camera going to show you what it looked like with everything laying in the water when it kind of collapsed. I didn't see it collapse, I just came down and it had already happened. So. I've got some footage of me fixing it and things like that, so at this point I'll just show you that and we'll kind of um, take you through the process. Alright, so this is what the tank looked like after I drained it. Um, when I first noticed that um, there was a problem, the tank was full like I said earlier, but um, I noticed the brace, which you see right in the middle there, was um, down in the tank. It had let go on the back side of the silicone sealant. The front side was still uh, attached, kind of acting like a hinge. And then, like I said before too, the tops were in the tank and the lights had fallen in the tank as well. So I just kind of wanted to show you here what it looked like from all angles. That's just looking down at it from the, from the top of the tank. You can see in the back there, where the silicone kind of let loose. It's an old silicone job, I think probably original to be honest with you, um, although I don't know that for sure. This is a very old tank. Um, here you can see in the front part of the tank where the silicone is still um, attached to the brace um, and it's uh, kind of acting as a hinge. Um, that brace is probably close to half inch glass and it's uh, it's not light. Um, so it could have done a lot more damage. The water in it obviously kind of softened the blow when it came down. As far as what we need to do in order to reseal this, um, I've got everything laid out. I've got two bar clamps, the kind that you usually use in woodworking. I've got these pieces of 2x4 cut uh, to, the, um, to the height between the bottom of the tank and the brace, just to use for extra bracing. And I've got um, some silicone, um, a silicone gun, um, some razor blades, things like that. Now when you choose your uh, silicone, you want to make sure that um, it is um, obviously aquarium safe, but you want to make sure that it's an actual adhesive silicone versus a sealant. Now um, that ASI brand that I showed you right there is best known for being a good adhesive. This Loctite clear silicone, it is waterproof and aquarium safe, but it's uh, more of a sealant versus an adhesive. So um, I had this around for some other things, but I just wanted to show you the difference between two options. And then razor blades are always important. Um, that way you have something to scrape off the old silicone. I've got a couple different razor blade holders, um, as you can see down there that I'll be using uh, in this case, and then a, a case of rusty old razor blades that uh, after this job I went and replaced actually and got some new ones. I didn't realize how um, bad a shape they were in, but that's what happens when they sit out in a garage where you have cold and hot seasons like we do in Minnesota here, and you don't use them over a long period. 
period of time. So this is just showing you um, the brace after I took it off. As you can see, it's thick glass. Um, I'm going to start by just peeling off um, all the excess silicone in all the different uh, connection points, both sides of the uh, brace and then both sides of the aquarium as well. Here I'm just uh, going after it with a uh, razor blade as you can see. Here I've taken the piece of glass out of the tank and i um, just going to continue to, to work on getting the silicone off of there. Actually this side I've already gotten pretty clean um, and I don't remember if this was before or after I went after it with some vinegar too to clean up all the uh, water deposits that were on it just to kind of make a, a, a better, um, clearer piece uh, for light to shine through. I lost the camera footage um, from most of the, the rest of the uh, silicone removal. So right now we're at the point where I'm adding new silicone. This didn't go the smoothest, but it, it worked out. Um, you know, being perfectly honest, this is the first time I've done any sort of resealing on any sort of an aquarium. In the past I've had a few aquariums that have let go, but um, honestly, I didn't want to bother with it. Um, I just basically cashed in on the warranty through Marineland and um, you know got a new tank, sold off the old one for somebody who wanted to reseal it and went from there. This is a different story. This is a 210 gallon aquarium. The only thing that broke was the brace and uh, this is too nice of a tank and just a nice old relic um, and a great size to um, you know let go so I wanted to go ahead and take care of uh, the repair myself as you can see I dropped a little silicone in the substrate which uh, you'll probably see quite a bit of as we kind of go through this but um, again my first time working with this so it wasn't pretty but we got the job done I'm just gonna go ahead and let you kind of watch this and uh, we'll move on from there All right, so this is where things start going a little bit bad for me. Um, thinking I can do this as a one-man job, I've got silicone on both sides and not really paying attention to really how heavy this piece of glass is. Um, you know, it's not heavy in the grand scheme of things, but when you're working with it at a weird angle underneath a fish stand and you need probably about four hands to hold it in there, put supports under it, and put the clamps on, um, you can just see it went bad pretty quickly for me. So um, I went ahead and enlisted the help of my wife, and uh, after we picked out all the pieces of gravel that got caught in the silicone, it kind of worked out. All right, so here's uh, the finished product, or at least um, once I, we got it all clamped in and supported and everything like that. You know, in the grand scheme of things, I probably should have take, taken the tank out of the stand, but this is a tank. It's the heaviest tank I own and just didn't work out. So we got it braced up really good. Um, I didn't have footage of any of that because we had to move the camera out of the way and we're kind of all hands on deck. But at any rate, it worked out good and we've got a finished product here. So here's the finished product. It's several weeks from when I sealed it. The tank's been holding up just fine. You can see my silicone job is in no way professional, but it's holding and doing just fine. Both the back and the front, there's silicone on top and the bottom, so it's gonna hold just fine. As you can see, the tank's full of water and it's been doing good now for well over a month. So I would say that this is a job well done as far as being able to save a tank that I really liked um, that they don't make anymore so it would be hard to find a replacement. 
Well, that's the video for today. I just wanted to show you what I did when I ran into a situation where, um, you know, I had a 210 gallon tank that let go on me. I was able to avoid disaster and also fix the tank so that I could continue to use it. Let me know if you would have done the same thing in the comments below or something different. If you're gonna leave criticism, make sure that it's constructive. Um, if you're new to my channel, make sure you check out some of my other videos. I've got um, all sorts of um, fish room tours that I do, showing you all the different tanks that you can see in the background. I also um, keep shrimp tanks and reef tanks, so I've got video playlists for everything that I do, product reviews, things like that. Make sure you go check that out. If you like what you see and you want to subscribe, go ahead and do that. Make sure you click that notification bell um, so that you get updates every time I do upload a video. Until next time, thanks for watching.